Today, the Iraq Museum in Baghdad has finally returned to life. Even if its full operability will only be accomplished when the country's security condition will return to normal levels, we can make a few observations on the most problematic aspects related to the communication of the museum to its public. It should be noticed that the Iraqi school system prescribes the teaching of the ancient history of the country only for a brief phase of the primary or secondary school. This complicates the communication between the museum and its visitors. It is certainly encouraging that today the museum is visited by many school children. In the exhibition rooms, they cannot find adequate tools for understanding the long and complex ancient history of the country. The Iraq Museum, for example, is not yet equipped with an adequate educational apparatus, panels, tags, brochures, which can briefly explain what is put on display in the rooms. To fill this gap partially, some of the rooms recently rearranged by the Italian intervention include diagrams, timelines, drawings and explanatory text that tell the story of the excavation, describe some objects and provide insights to the visitors. Moreover, the museum exhibition is static, its classification being based mainly on the chronology or on the material of the objects. Many of the great masterpieces that are displayed here are not enhanced adequately. It should be also noticed that in spite of the many efforts made in the last 10 years by Iraqi and international interventions, much remains to be done in terms of structures and exhibition methods. Many showcases are still those of the old museum setting. The lighting system do not enhance the objects. The ventilation system is not sufficient for some periods of the year. There are no visual and audiovisual systems that can capture the visitor's attention better. No accessory spaces for entertainment, games and further information. Within such a large museum, Theme-based itineraries could be created, with guides illustrating particular historical moments or particular production. The museum has about 20 rooms and galleries and tells more than 9,000 years of history, a route difficult to cover in a couple of hours. Theme-based itineraries would also encourage visitors to return to the museum several times each time perhaps to discover a single aspect more deeply. Another aspect that should be fully developed in the Iraq Museum is the editing and publication of informative material, brochures, flyers, guides, catalogues, etc. Recently, within the European project HIDU, a series of comics related to the archaeological excavation practice and to the role of the museums as important institution for the cultural and social life of a community have been produced. The protagonists of these comics are mainly children. Indeed, these comics were meant to bring the new generation closer to museums and to their own heritage and past history, but also to reach their families and get them closer to the life and activities of the museum. The children who bring home these comics should possibly read them together with the parents. Recently, the direction of the museum gave the concession to take photographs and videos inside the exhibition rooms of the Iraq Museum in Baghdad. In the past, this was not allowed, but it is obvious that today, with the widespread use of mobile phones by the new generation, such a ban would not have made sense. Moreover, the chance to take pictures of the masterpieces or even to take a selfie inside the rooms led to the object of the past history has been warmly welcomed among the youngest. This is also a new way of communicating involving the public in a visit that is not merely passive and allowing the young visitors to bring back home the memory of a beautiful day and show it to their parents or friends. At the same time, at the more in-depth level, 
A new museum catalogue must be drawn up. The existing one is old and it was written in the 70s. It is still a valid guide, but it is not updated anymore and it does not reflect the new museum organization. As already mentioned, the museum must be a living place that produces culture and knowledge. In this sense, the museum could organize further activities like educational workshops, aiming especially to children and students, illustrating and telling through practical activities the ancient history and tradition of the country. All these are activities that do not involve the need for new spaces or structures, in addition to those already existing in the Baghdad Museum complex. It is obvious that it will take years to implement such intervention, but it is necessary to start immediately because what is most valuable is the transmission of this very important cultural heritage and background to the new generations. A museum is made, first of all, by its visitors. It is therefore essential that more and more people go to the museum, visiting it several times and therefore transforming it with their own presence from a mere container of mute objects into a place of life, joy and knowledge.